Hi, I'm Dr. Maxim Chumak, and we're here today at Hair by Dr. Max Restoration Center in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. So we continue with our uh, discussion regarding uh, different case scenarios. And today we have an interesting case. Uh, what do I do when I see a bad work done by a previous doctor? Or a lot of time, unfortunately, in, in hair transplant in industry, doctors are not very much involved with their patients. And a lot of time, unfortunately, most of the procedure has been done by unlicensed technicians. And frequently we can see some bad outcomes. I recently met a patient who is 27 years old and had his surgery, uh, an FUE procedure, done uh, about two years ago. He was not very happy with the results because the hairline did not look very natural. The angles were not done properly, how the hair was implanted, as well as type of hair was uh, used to restore was not ap appropriate. Let's take a look at that. So here's the hairline that was designed. First of all, you can see that the shape was completely out of the uh, typical uh, male type of hairline because we're supposed to see an apex of the frontal temporal angle correlate with the canthus, with the lateral canthus of the eye or the line that goes through the laterally of the eye. And it's clearly not the case. You cannot actually kind of pinpoint on the frontal temporal angle actually existing. Additionally, the hairline is too straight. You, you cannot really see the irregularity that you're supposed to uh, be seen with the typical hairline design and it's kind of a, just a line of uh, hair follicle placed. That's number one that kind of uh, screams abnormal. Secondly, the type of hair was used from the occipital parts to thicker hair and it's completely out of place here. So in order to create a, a normally looking natural hairline, we're supposed to use a, a tiny fine hair from the temple area to create an irregular, what we call a transition zone. The transition zone is not in existence here, right? And then we create a dense zone following that with the thicker hair. Another problem we can see here that the hair is completely angled inappropriately. It actually grows upwards and it tilts posterior like in eyelashes. With the proper placement of hair, like, like we use uh, direct implantation, we can direct hair straight down with a low angle so it kind of naturally flows and blends with the existing hair. Here's another picture showing lack of, uh, of the irregularity, lack of the transition zone and the density. And some of the areas are completely lack of any density. Here's another picture after we trim the hair and you can see where the problem is. See, there is nothing, the shape, and we design a different type of hairline that will look more natural, of course. And you can see how the hair follicles placed inappropriately, uh, not covering enough on the left side. Here, you have the same density as you start, and the large graft were used instead of tiny. There is no transition zone. There is no defined dense area. So um, no surprise, the patient was very unhappy with the result. So what we did, we decided we're gonna change the shape of the hairline. We're gonna create a little widow's peak right in the front and have more natural looking hairline with um, uh, frontal temporal angles clearly seen as here on the picture. Uh, here's another picture uh, showing right before we implanted and here's um, I outlined the area for the transition zone where just a single fine hair from temples will be used to create this irregularly irregular pattern to ensure a more natural look. Okay, So here's the video, the short video we took after we finished with hair implantation. Um, you can see the clear irregularity. You can see the smaller grafts placed in the frontal area. We created a dense zone here and we complemented. Um, we used the existing density and placed grafts right in between. 
The difference is uh, when you use a direct implantation, first of all, it is done by a physician. So in, um, in our clinic, I do the entire procedure. I harvest the hair, I implant every single graft. And I'm, I'm being able to uh, see the existing hair implant perfectly. I can also see uh, the existing hair angles and match them as much as possible. In this case, because we already had a lot of grafts uh, placed uh, in um, abnormal direction, I tried to go with the super low angles uh, with my grafts to uh, try to push them down as much as possible and kind of have a, high, a little bit higher density to help to, uh, to correct the uh, previously improperly angled hair. So here's how the surgery looked like the next day. Uh, you can see the areas that you know, we were, we've been working on to fix uh, uh, the previous uh, surgery, uh, give more density. And it will take now uh, between five to six months to see about half of the uh, projected results. And by uh, end of the year, by 12 months, we see majority, about 80 to 90 percent of the results. Uh, so we'll keep you updated and how the end result uh, after the procedure would be. To summarize, it is important to research the clinic, physician, how much physician is actually participating in the surgery. When you go for consultation, you have to ask, are you gonna be the doctor who does the procedure? Are you gonna be implanting the graft? If not, who's gonna be doing that? It is important to realize that uh, there are a lot of places that will um, take advantage of people by lower uh, offering Super cheap deals. Super cheap deals does not mean good results. And there is a reason why those super cheap deals exist, because they try to cut on something, okay? And if, if you don't have an experienced doctor who performed the surgery, then you might be living worse than you came in. So with any questions uh, about what we can do to help with the hair loss, uh, please don't hesitate to call us at 954-945-2909. We can schedule either in-person consultation or um, virtual. Our website is bringbackhair.com. There's plenty of useful information. Uh, please like and subscribe for more behind the scenes content. Thank you.